Welcome back to the Our Performance Hall here at IPFW. It's time for us to get back to the questions. Yes, this is what we affectionately call the lightning round. And here's the format for the lightning round. Heather and I will ask a question of one candidate. Only that candidate will answer the question, and he or she will have 30 seconds. So let's get going. And the first one will be to Paula Hughes. You have proposed cutting the deputy mayor's yearly pay from $120,000 to less than $76,000. Wouldn't this make the job less attractive to qualified, talented applicants? Thank you. No, I don't think it would. Uh, in much the same way that I have objected to the fact that we have the highest paid mayor in the state of Indiana, I don't think we should have all highest paid officials in city government. You do public work because you want to serve the people of the community. That's why I'm running for mayor, not because I want a big paycheck. I can get myself back and forth to work, and I can do it for the same amount of pay that the mayors of Indianapolis and South Bend make. That's what's important. We've got to do sacrifice right at the top and make clear. We, I mean, we have the highest paid mayor in the state and on average the lowest paid police force. We cannot allow that to continue. All right, I'd like to direct this question to the mayor. In retrospect, was the Harrison Square project worth doing? Why or why not? The Harrison Square development was probably the finest development that this city has seen in decades. It has down, made downtown Fort Wayne a real point of destination for not only our own citizens, but for visitors as well. Over a million people a year visit downtown Fort Wayne. Parkview Field even my opponents have said Parkview Field is an unbelievable asset for downtown. The brand new Marriott Hotel, because of that, we're able to bring in bigger conventions. The Harrison Square was a wonderful development. It took a little time to, to get to the point of finishing it because of the national economy, not because there was a lack of desire. Paul Hughes, I want to ask you that same question. Again, in retrospect, was the Harrison Square project worth doing? And explain why or why not. I supported Harrison Square when it was first conceived, when it was supposed to be a public-private partnership. It was much more attractive to the community when there was a 50-50 partnership between the public sector and the private sector. I still support Harrison Square as a concept. I've had a lot of difficulty with this final piece, the Harrison, because the private sector isn't coming to the table the way they promised to do. We as a community put $35 million into Parkview Field. That is a huge investment, an overinvestment when you think of the fact that the private sector partners in that, the people who are benefiting by having their team in Parkview Field, did not follow through on their promises to the community, and we have not held their feet to the fire. Paula Hughes, I'd like to direct this toward you. Do you think, as some have suggested, that Fort Wayne has a self-esteem problem? If that's the case, <laughs> what would you do to correct that? You know, one of the things that's happened in this community is we spent a lot of time bemoaning the fact that we lost Harvester. It's over 20 years ago, the community has remade itself. Then we lost the Lincoln National Corporate Headquarters. And, and those were hard blows for this community. We've been looking at Indianapolis with envy. We've been looking at other communities with envy. But frankly, we have everything we need right here in Fort Wayne to be successful. We are leaders in innovation and entrepreneurship. Other communities look at us with envy for that, and we don't realize it. We have so much opportunity here. We can prosper. We will thrive. We can follow those models. We have seen how in central Indiana, they have come together and worked together to make themselves prosperous. We'll do that in northeast Indiana as well. Okay, Mayor Henry, I'll ask that same question of you. Do, does Fort Wayne have a self-esteem esteem problem? And if so, what can we do to turn it around? I absolutely disagree with my opponent. I think Fort Wayne is finally beginning to walk with a swagger. <laughs> we, really are, we really are because things are coming our way. I mentioned downtown Fort Wayne. What a wonderful development the Harrison Square project has been. Jobs are coming into our community. Since last January, over 1,500 high-paying, quality jobs with good benefits have come into our community. Businesses are expanding. Corporations not only moving in, but even small businesses now are being given a chance to grow. Remember, Chuck Surak was once a small businessman. Now he owns Sweetwater Sound. Pat Miller started in her garage. Now look at Vera Bradley. Our city is beginning to go. I chaired a, a conference of mayors, and they all look to Fort Wayne for guidance. All right, Mayor Henry, would you agree that the campaign 
became negative early on, and that each of you at some point perhaps has distorted the other's record. Campaigns are tough. There's no question about it, especially in a position like the mayor of the city of Fort Wayne, a position that many people covet. Few have the courage to run because they know what you're going to go through. You really expose yourself and your family to a lot of crit criticism, critique. But campaigns are tough. But I think when it comes down to the bottom line at the end of the day, what we're really talking about are the issues. We have a way of getting around it, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's the main issues that are facing the citizens of Fort Wayne. Uh, okay, back to the question though. Um, would you agree that, that you have distorted your opponent's record and character to some degree and that the same has been true of her with you? Well, I stand by my answer. I, campaigns are tough. As I mentioned, you expose yourself, you make yourself vulnerable to a lot of criticism, whether it's the incumbent or the challenger. You're going to look for areas to attack that person. Uh, Haley has been very, very good, I think, at, at uh, leaving both of us alone for the most part. And I thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, this is well, great about a democracy. We've got three of us up here. Uh, but there's no question. It's, it's a tough, tough field to be in. Do we get aggressive? Yes. There's no question about it. Uh, do you try to take advantage, perhaps, of some weaknesses of your opponent? Sure. You have to, to try to gain the advantage. It's not unlike a football field. And I'd like to direct that question to you, Paula Hughes. At some point, would you agree or disagree that some of the advertising that got negative distorted Mayor Henry's record? Well, I know that my record has been distorted. Uh, let me be very clear. I'm glad of the opportunity to restore my record. Uh, the mayor came out in the middle of August, and I thought it was politics as usual. Uh, you know, Tom Henry was slinging mud at me, and it was, you know, lying about my record and saying I'd raced to Texas for 10 years when I'd only been in office for eight. And I thought, you know, that is, that's just, he's just playing politics. And then about last month, uh, there came a series of ads saying that I was going to cause floods, that I was going to cut, you know, leaf pickup and snow removal. And I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was just silly. Uh, you know, even the Journal Gazette said it's just simply not true. Uh, but then most recently, I have to say that it crossed the line. Uh, you know, there was a personal attack lobbed at my, my person, at my husband's person, saying very nasty negative things. And I have called formally on Mayor Henry and the Allen County Democratic Party and the Indiana State Democratic Party to retract their statements because, again, even the Journal Gazette has said that they are blatantly false and the Henry campaign has gone too far. The anti-Hughes is over the top. That has no place in a city like Fort Wayne. We are a good community. We should be talking about the issues, cutting wasteful spending, reducing the city's debt, and most of all, getting Fort Wayne working again. That's what we need to talk about. That's the contrast. That's what my ads have been about. Uh, Paul Hughes, I'm going to ask the question again. W would you agree that your campaign has, to some degree, distorted Mayor Henry's record and character, and, and I'll take it a step deeper. Do you personally approve the pictures of him that are used in your ads? I stand by everything that my campaign has done. When you do something, you own it. You don't hide behind other people. And I have not distorted the mayor's record. The mayor was on city council for 20 years and raised taxes or fees every single year he was on that bench. Now his four years as mayor, just six weeks ago, he asked for a tax increase, the largest allowed by Indiana state law. That's not a distortion, that's the facts. The pictures are pictures that were out there. We have not distorted any of the pictures. We do not Photoshop, we do not allow it. But you've approved them, every yes. picture that's used, that's been used. Mayor Henry, you have been criticized in the past for using out of town, out-of-state consultants mm -hmm. uh -huh. on various projects. Uh -huh. How do you respond to that criticism? From time to time, experts are needed in specific areas. Sometimes my staff does not have a level of expertise 
that we need. Or even if they do, we need an added level sometimes to get a particular engineering job done to, to make sure it happens in the most expedient fashion possible. So we look around and we make sure that if there are people out there who have that added level of expertise, education, experience, do we bring them in to help out the existing staff so we can complete a project in a timely fashion? You bet. Uh, Mayor Henry, describe your personal involvement in the negotiations of the INM light lease deal, including how many negotiating sessions you actually personally sat in on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the the uh, negotiations between Indiana, Michigan Light uh, and the city of Fort Wayne, uh, they were very intensive, very numerous. Uh, I personally had a wonderful team working on it. Uh, not only a great legal team, but an operating team as well, City Utilities Division as well as others. I felt actually after a few meetings that I did not have I did not have to get involved because, as I said a few minutes ago, they were getting into areas of, ex areas of expertise that were beyond what I knew. So I stood back and let my team take over. Uh, to be a little more specific, I had a number of hours in it, but the vast majority was done by my team. I actually would like to direct this question to each of you, but I would like to begin with Haley Arendt. What are your thoughts on the local members of the Occupy movement remaining in Headwaters Park indefinitely. Thanks, Heather. I, people are really aggravated, and, and I think that there was a clip on your broadcast, actually, of one of the demonstrators who I think said it best. They're not, they're not sure who they're mad at, and I believe that they're mad at lobbyists and lawmakers, because you can never fault a person for how much money they make. But the problem is that in our national environment, we have uh, greed. And when you have that and they can feel the loophole, they end up taking the money. So when, when you have that kind of unethical behavior from the banks, then I think they ought to sit out in front of the banks, but I think that they ought to also go and look at the lobbyist and get involved. Go to city council meetings. Start educating yourself as far as how everything works in city government. Should they be allowed to continue to stay at Headwaters Park? Well, I know the park is closed, and I know that uh, Paula Hughes has already challenged the mayor to have them removed. Um, but if they're not there, they're going to be somewhere. So as long as they're, they're peaceful right now, um, I think we ought to go down and listen to what they have to say, and I plan on doing that Saturday. Paula Hughes. Well, I have said, I mean, the, the law is in place to maintain order in our society. I uh, certainly understand frustration. That's why I'm running for mayor, because I'm very frustrated with how our city government is run. And, and so I empathize with the frustration that the members of this movement must feel, but I don't think capitalism is the enemy. Our country was founded on capitalism. We were founded as a republic. We are supposed to work together, and being successful is not a bad thing. Uh, letting those members squat. I mean, they're occupying an area that they're not allowed to occupy. They're, they've gone beyond just occupying ideals. They're occupying land that is not theirs to occupy. They can peaceably gather, but they cannot break the law. And if we allow them to break the law, what's the next step? Who else are we going, going to allow to break the law? The law must be upheld. And Mayor Henry, your response. When, when do you stop freedom of speech? When do you stop freedom of assembly? We've looked at this issue very closely and decided that these individuals are peaceful, they're doing no harm, they're non-confrontational, they're meeting our demands. I'm not so sure that Mother Nature herself might ultimately ask them to leave. But the bottom line is, as long as they're peaceful, they're law-abiding in the sense that whatever we ask them to do, they do. They have no water, they have no bathrooms currently, so they're trying to figure out a way out of that. But as long as they're behaving themselves, do I believe in the freedom of speech and freedom of assembly, you bet. And that's it for the lightning round. Now it's time for closing statements. Here, each candidate will get a minute and a half. And again, we drew randomly before the debate began and we will begin closing arguments with Paula Hughes. 
Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight, those of you in the audience and those of you that are watching at home. This campaign is supposed to be talking about what is going to take Fort Wayne to the next level. How are we going to thrive going into the future? How are we going to cut wasteful spending, get the basics right, cut the spending that's not necessary, like an overpaid mayor? How are we going to cut the city's debt? But those are the basics. When you get the basics in order, that's only because you want to get Fort Wayne working again. How are we going to create jobs for Fort Wayne? That's got to be our focus. Those are our priorities. Police, potholes, paychecks, prioritized spending, job creation. I will be a hands-on mayor, just the way I was a hands-on county council member. When Steel Dynamics wanted to build a plant somewhere in northern Indiana, and we heard about it, I put Keith Bussey and Mark Millett in a truck, along with County Commissioner Nelson Peters, and we drove around with them in the truck in Allen County and convinced them of our passion for bringing their business to our community. Fort Wayne deserves that same level of dedication. We need a hands-on mayor. We don't need to hire consultants for everything. We have the expertise right here in Fort Wayne. I'm passionate about what we can accomplish. I'm passionate about Fort Wayne and Northeast Indiana. This is where I choose to make my home, and I know it's where you choose to make yours. Let's take Fort Wayne to the next level. Thank you. And Haley, your closing statement, please. Thank you. Speaking of large contributions, I do believe I am the only one up here who cannot point fingers uh, for contributions. And I believe that the, the morality is down in the city because we have such a great divide between the two parties. They don't seem to work well together, and they hold up projects from one another and, uh, so that they can take the credit for it. But I think our administration needs to be more conservative in its spending habits. And I think we don't listen to all walks of life people. Uh, we need to have some compromise, uh, but not compromise service and not compromise uh, people's welfare and stay ethical. Um, I have never gotten a job from my family's wealth or influence. I'm proud to say that I have always uh, got my employment and moved up because I was duly qualified. I will be an effective leader and I will bring the city back to the level and put it back on track. We've had, uh, instead of people paying attention to the catchwords in the election, we need to really focus on things that happened in the past, boxed annexations, levies that never stop, and uh, a building that hasn't been built in the Fort Wayne. Tom Henry has been saddled with a lot of debt from previous administrations and from other parties, and both parties actually. So if you're going to blame him for some debt, don't judge him on that. Judge him on just what he has done on his performance. I hope that you vote for me. Thank you. All right, and Mayor Henry, your closing statement. Thank you. Again, thank you both. Thank all of you for coming tonight. Four years ago, you, the citizens of Fort Wayne, trusted me with the reins of the mayor's office. You asked me to fulfill three primary responsibilities. First was to put together a financial foundation that supported our operations, at the same time maintain a positive cash reserve. I have done that. You asked me to work on an environment that would be attractive to employers, to bring new jobs into our community, to keep the jobs that are here, here, and to help those jobs grow. I'm doing just that. And you asked me to provide basic city services so you can have the quality of life that you become accustomed to. You asked me to plow snow when there was a blizzard. I think we've done that in record time. You've asked me to pick up your leaves. I've done that. You've asked me to pick up your trash. Yeah, I've done that. You've asked for a new recycling program. We've done that. You've asked me to provide a quality police department, second to none in the state, and a fire department just as good. I think we've gone over and above all of your expectations when it comes to public service. So the three things you entrusted me with, I think I have provided to you over the past four years. I want to continue that. I ask for your trust for another four years. Thank you. All right. That is all the time we have. So we would once again like to thank all three of you for participating in our debate tonight. We appreciate that. And we'd also like to thank our partner, the Mike Down Center for Politics here at IPFW, along with IPFW and CATV for their help in tonight's debate.
And we want to remind you, Election Day is just a week away. Make sure you get out and vote. And of course, then turn to Wayne TV and Wayne.com for election results and for complete analysis, too. For all of us here at Wayne TV, thanks for joining us. Have a terrific night. Don't forget to vote a week from tonight. Good night.